Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboVent video series. This is Tim and we are ready for activity 15 of the Tetrix Prism Programming Guide. So we're going to kind of bring everything together and put it all in one spot. Now before we do this, we need to make sure that you've actually added the servo arm. So if you haven't done that, go back and do the building interlude, giving our robot some attitude because we need to actually improve the way it can interact with um, the environment around us as far as let us know what's going on with some attitude, hopefully. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and do that. The idea of this uh, particular activity, again, is we are going to combine what we know. We're going to actually use both sensors at once with the task spot and actually give an action so that when the robot follows a line, it's going to look for an obstacle at the same time and then if it sees that obstacle, it's going to actually do a specific behavior that we'll be able to take notice of. So it's going to, excuse me, <coughs> it's going to let us know the condition that it's seen. So that's the attitude, or that's the intent of this particular activity. So like all our other activities, let's make sure we've got everything we need. Taskbot with prism mounted on top, sensor modules on the front, We've added the servo on the back with our little lever arm. We've got <laughs> charge battery. We've got our USB cable. We've got our computer software loaded on it. And we are ready to go ahead and let's open up our sketch. So we're gonna launch our Arduino software. When we do that, software is gonna come up and we're gonna go to our file <laughs> option, examples. Go to Tetrix Prism, and the one we're looking for is Taskbot Activity uh, 15, Combining Sensors. When that one comes up, we're going to expand our window so that we can see everything that we need to see in the programming window. A little bit more to this sketch, so let's make sure we can see everything. We're going to start like we have in the past. We're going to check out our comments, make sure that it makes sense to us what the intent is for this particular activity. Again, the idea is that the program's going to use a line finder with the ultrasonic at the same time, follow a path, blah, line, the edge of the line, and then if it sees an obstacle in the way, it's going to stop, it's going to raise a flag, and then as soon as the obstacle is removed, it's going to lower the flag and continue on the behavior. So that's the idea behind this. So let's go ahead and, and upload our program. Let's start by powering on our prism. We're going to actually make the connection to our computer with our USB cable, just like we have in the past. Connect it to our robot, just like this. Again, we've confirmed that it's powered on with our blue light. We have a green light over here ready to receive the signal from the computer. Going to go back to my environment. I'm going to verify my code, showing that it's uh, download or it's actually valid code. Now I'm going to go ahead and upload it to the computer or to my taskbot. I should be getting a data light. Once it tells me that it's done uploading, I'm going to wait for my green light there. See that? I can actually again because I need some room to move here. I'm going to unplug my uh, cable. I'm ready to put it on the floor and execute this time in addition to an obstacle box or a wall I also need a path so I need a contrasting um, background with a dark line on it once I have that together I'm ready to set it on the floor and see if it works so let's do that now yep go for it All right, now that we've uh, we've uh, successfully executed that, I hope it all worked. If it didn't, let's remember our troubleshooting tips. We've got two things to look at this time. We've got our ultrasonic sensor, make sure our connections are correct. We need to go back to our getting started activity number five, where we look at the serial monitor, make sure we've got valid signal coming from our ultrason ultrasonic. Make sure that we've got our line finder working correctly. Again, remember those troubleshooting tips for that. Make sure that we're getting the red LED on our sensor when we're over the 
the white background from versus over the, the dark line. Check our connections. Make sure we've got our sensors in the correct port. That's very important if you've got behavior that's not working. We've added the servo. Make sure our servo is connected in the right port according to our sketch. So once that's all done, we know this example works because we've tried it here. So then go back and try it again and hopefully it'll work for you as well. Let's look a little bit more in the actual um, sketch itself to make sure if there's anything new what, uh, that we're doing with this. And actually, you can um, see that basically this is the uh, same uh, behavior that we have already accessed. We're using um, in our setup um, the prism begin. We've used that all along. Set motor invert. We want our motors to work together. We only need to call that once. We've actually talking to servo this time. So we've got in our setup, we've got our prism set servo speed. We want to tell the servo how fast to react. You can see it's a little bit faster speed than what we used before. Um, and then we move down to, but that's nothing new. Everything we've we've seen all of this before. When we move into our loop, we've got an if else statement, just like we did in the last sketch that we used. And we've got multiple behaviors based off of that simple test. We're reading this time in our if else, we're reading our line sensor. So uh, that's the sensor that we're testing for our if else. And in the two behaviors, we're doing a line follow behavior. Again, one condition, we're turning in one direction. The other condition, we're turning in the opposite direction, following the line or the edge of the line. And then with our while statement, which we had in one of the, uh, the other examples, we're actually reading our uh, sonic sensor. And then while it's in a certain condition, we're doing a uh, a behavior with the uh, when it sees something within the ultrasonic sensor it's actually doing a behavior with the, the uh, servo raising the flag and then when it's not uh, seeing that and it gets out of that while loop then we're going back to the basic behavior where it lowers the flag and it continues with the line following behavior that's all in the loop so that's why when you remove the obstacle continues on with the behavior that it had before. So again, nothing really new here. We're just kind of applying everything in a slightly different way. And ultimately, guys, that's what programming is kind of all about. It's understanding the tools available to you and combining them in different ways so that you come up with unique behaviors um, that are look new and exciting and different, but actually it's just a different way of combining what you already know. That's what coding is all about. So. Let's talk about some of the real world connections because now we truly are talking about that smart car where we're not only uh, avoiding the obstacle, but we're, we're continuing with the idea of um, once we see something that maybe the human didn't see, we're, we're creating a specific behavior. But then we're going back and once that behavior is, is modified and we're seeing a different condition, we're doing something else. So we're not only talking about smart cars here, we're talking about smart devices in general, all kinds that um, phones, health monitoring devices that collect information, uh, exercise uh, equipment, how much we should exercise, those type of things that are helping us decide uh, what we need to do in our lives on a daily basis. So uh, all of these things are really coming together to, to, and we're seeing more and more of them in our real world. Let's talk about the STEM extensions that we have uh, options to talk about. Science, now we're really, we can make a connection with multiple sensors, uh, how that connects to the human body. Obviously, our human um, <laughs> biological self has different senses that we uh, integrate uh, very closely in everything we do. We use the multiple sensors all at the same time. So we're beginning to see the connection of what that means within the robot how it takes, what it takes to, to build a the machine to do the same thing or a similar thing than what the human body does. Technology, we can actually talk about, okay, if, I, if I'm looking at sensors, I have to prioritize those. What's more important and, and what that means to the device and how it works? Engineering, how, do, how can I build a device that actually integrates all of that information and takes advantage of it and creates an intelligent and smart behavior. So that becomes important. And then obviously math, again, 
we've got all kinds of data that we have to sort through and, and manipulate and do things with that uh, allow for, in, again, intelligent behavior that as an outcome of that. So those are all things that we can talk about that are related to STEM when we do an exercise like this. Where does it go from here? Well, gosh, guys, this is where um, you can you can do all kinds of things. Again, we encourage you to try, try and recreate that from scratch, exactly what we've done. And then once you've done that and you, you've got your syntax all create, uh, correct, um, it's just a matter of then modifying the code to do uh, lots of different things. Maybe in addition to um, the raising the flag, you do a different behavior where you actually try and avoid the obstacle. So there's things that you could do with that. So the idea is that we've given you a lot of tools here. So now it's up to you to take those tools and use your creativity and find lots of new ways to apply those. Remember everything you've learned with the previous activities. Um, those are your building blocks. Look at the examples that we've given. Uh, explore online with uh, the Arduino.cc, the www.arduino.cc with the tutorials there to build on those sketch and those coding skills and build bigger, more complicated robots. Put it all together. It's all up to you. So hope you found that inspirational, informational, and remember, like we always say, have fun, build lots of robots, and come back and see us.